Okay, so we're gonna get into the A-frame installation of the kit here, so we're gonna really dive into the, uh, to the bones. Um, so one of the first things that you're gonna do um, when you start getting into this project is you're gonna open up this box. It's called the first box, and um, there's a lot of necessary pieces in here. Um, so open this up, and the first thing you're gonna see is this orange dry bag here. Uh, we call this the goodie bag. Um, there's some necessary components to the uh, to the install here. Um, the big one is rust preventative for the holes that you're going to drill, and some drill bits. All right, and then there's some other doodads in here, some decals for your band, um, some uh, cargo D rings uh, for the L track, carabiner, and um, some cam straps. So uh, that'll become useful when the kit's installed and you're out camping. So you can set that aside for now. Um, and then the other things you'll find are the hardware for the kit. So um, you're gonna have your ceiling bracer and track hardware bag here. Um, another bag of hardware um, for panels and um, they've got black button head bolts. Um, so these are a little bit different than the track bolts that you use for the rest of the kit. And then um, all the hardware for the A-frame. This is the one that you're gonna dive into right now. So it's got your uh, rivets and your riv nuts. And so you're gonna bring this with you into the van um, and get going with that install. Okay, and so now we're gonna get into the, uh, the A-frame. I've, I've kind of laid out the A-frame on the table here. Um, and so you're gonna find a lot of these, these orange pieces um, and they're sort of broken apart in between uh, like vertical and horizontal pieces. So the more complex pieces that you see, they're sort of three-dimensional shapes like this. Um, they're labeled TH1, TH2, TH3, and TH4. Those are the vertical pieces um, along with TH5 here as well. Um, and so TH1 is, is basically the first piece that, that we start with. Um, and, and TH stands for a transit high for, for those of you that are sort of wondering what, what the logic is behind it. Um, and, and then all the more flat pieces like this, um, if I can pick it up off the table here, these are the ones that are, um, that are the horizontal pieces that go in between the verticals and, and do some of that index, indexing as well. And then there's some other pieces kind of like this one here. Um, we call this a wire chase. This is gonna fit into the top corner of the van um, uh, where the wall meets the ceiling here. Um, so, and then basically what this A-frame is, this is the structural component of the kit. So this is kind of the skeleton of the kit. And uh, when you get to this part of the, of the install, when you get your track out, um, all of these holes here, whether it's a hole for a rib nut like this one that you'll set in the van, or these uh, cinch nuts here, um, you know, that's what you're bolting the track down to this piece. The track is reinforced by the A-frame, and then the track is also flanged to hold the panel kit. So this is this truly is the skeleton of the, of the entire kit. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start with TH1 here. You can kind of think of this as, as basically, uh, think of it like the tree trunk for the whole the whole thing. It kind of starts here, everything kind of, kind of branches out from there. So we're working on the driver's side, I'm working on the C-pillar, um, kind of along this line here, and we're gonna be using some of these some of these factory holes um, as indexing points uh, with, with this piece here. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that we're working with the right, the right factory holes uh, when we line this piece up. Okay, so um, I've got TH1 clamped up here. Uh, just sort of a, a, a pro tip here. Um, if you have a clamp about this size, you wanna try to stick the end of the clamp in this OEM rectangular hole here uh, before you put the piece in there, then slide it in, then clamp it down. If you have an extra set of hands, um, that is also really helpful. Uh, but we wanna just sort of identify which uh, OEM holes we're gonna use to index. Um, and you can mark those. Um, we can mark them with tape or whatever you need to do. Um, so the first one is right underneath where it says TH1. You'll see a factory hole lined up just behind that piece. All right, and, and this piece kind of, it, it almost finds its own home using this cutout for the window cavity. There's a little bump out uh, for the frame down here, which we'll, we'll show. Um, and then we're identifying these holes. So anyway, um, the first one is right here, like I said, under TH1. So I just put a little piece of tape there uh, just once I take this piece away. Um, so it's just a marker for which hole I'm working with. All right, and then down here, there's our second indexing point right here. A little kind of bump out in our piece and you'll see it lines up over an OEM hole there. And then at the very bottom, this hole right here, there's another OEM hole. Um, kind of move it aside, you can see there's this kind of little tab here. 
that hole right there. So what we're doing with those holes, once we take this orange piece away, is we're gonna open them up with our 2564 drill bit to, uh, to open them up for, for setting a rib nut. And then there's one last thing we need to do um, before we take this piece away is there's some of these cinch nuts in this, in this component as well. And we need the cinch nuts to have a place to go behind because they kind of protrude off the back of this piece and we need this piece to lay flat. So uh, right here where these cinch nuts are, um, and we need to uh, stick like, uh, you can stick a little drill bit, you can stick a little pin, whatever it might be. But basically what we're doing is, is marking where that is. Um, this one right here above our indexing hole, kind of up into the right slightly, and then at the very bottom. All right, and we're just gonna stick something through the hole, scratch up the paint a little bit. Um, you could use a, the, the, one of the 316th rivets. The, the pin is actually sharp enough to do that. And we're gonna come back through and drill a big hole um, to allow the cinch nut to, to recess in and, and allow the piece to lay flat. Okay, so uh, a couple things I wanted to point out. You can see how close these two OEM holes are to each other. Um, so I wanted to point out it is this one that we're drilling out, not this one. All right, so when you do your tape or whatever you're doing, just, just make sure you take note of that and, and drill out the, the right one. Second indexing hole for the rib nut there. And then third one down here. All right, and then these are where we stuck our little punch through. Um, we actually stuck a punch through the, the cinch nut, smacked it with a mallet, and then scratched it a little bit too so we could see it. Um, you'll notice this one's kind of right on this factory crease. It, it's okay because we're not setting a rib nut there. We're gonna take an oversized bit for these holes, you know, a step bit, whatever you have, uh, something quite big just to give you, you know, a big margin for that to fit through. Open that up so the cinch nut sits in there. And then the other one right there. After we drill, we always deburr the holes that are going to receive rib nuts, clean them up before adding rust preventative. Then we have to open up the holes where the cinch nuts are going to go. So we're using a step bit. We did use a punch, so it should drill and clean. trickier. The kit will include the small jug of rust preventative and this brush and every hole drilled in the van gets this treatment. You can be somewhat generous, just make sure you get the backside and the full perimeter. Okay, so we're gonna get into uh, setting our first few rib nuts of the kit. There's one thing that I wanted to mention, um, and, and that's if you haven't worked with a rib nut setter before, um, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's, it's an interesting piece of hardware. So that's what the rib nut looks like. It basically works like a rivet. It, it compresses and mushrooms the backside and, and kind of clamps the two pieces of material together. Um, it's important uh, that you might practice with this a little bit first and get the settings on the, on the tool proper. So um, a good thing to do is actually save the off cut for when you do your fan and drill a couple of holes in that and try to set some rib nuts. Um, and then sort of start, start to see how the, two, how the uh, hardware mushrooms out and stuff and, and just kind of get used to it. Um, Cause it's way easier to take care of that off the, off the get-go, then start setting stuff and, and have one set improperly and need to go back through and drill it out. So just wanted to give you guys a, a tip on that.
Okay, so we set uh, a couple of our indexing points, um, and now we're going to go back through and open up the rest of the 2564 size holes for our rib nuts. Um, a few pro tips, um, the, the drill bits that are included in the kit are good quality cobalt drill bits, so they're sharp and they'll stay sharp. Uh, but you are drilling through metal, so the name of the game is, is you don't need to get a whole lot of speed with your drill bit, and you want to apply some good pressure behind it. Um, and that should cut through pretty, pretty cleanly and pretty, pretty easily. Uh, the other thing to think about is that we're kind of leaving the top you know, open. We're going to go in succession from the bottom up. And the reason for that is when we set the rib nuts, um, you know, it's, it's contouring to the van. And then also, um, after you drill these holes, we want to be able to kind of pull this back a little bit and get an air tool in there or something like that. You can blow in there, but you're just trying to get the metal tailings out from behind. Um, the piece uh, after you drill so so we don't have rust issues later on. So we're going to kind of go work up in this direction. Um, obviously we don't have any in this section and then we're going to hit this one and kind of work down in this direction. Um, that lowest first indexing point that we drilled open the, uh, the factory hole, we didn't uh, connect a rib nut to that yet. We'll kind of do that with the, with the rest of them that we're doing here. So Jeff got that one, I'm going to work up, pull out the tailings, and then we'll come back and hit it with the rust preventative. These upper wall sections are double thickness, so make sure you paint all the way back in there. Try to get behind it and again just be generous. It will dry clear eventually. Okay, before we set the rib nuts, we're just going to give it a quick blow out, make sure we're not leaving any metal behind. And we're going to go ahead and set the first two on this piece. Okay, three rib nuts set up top. Now we're coming down below the one that we set previously and we've got a couple more to go. We just proceed on the same program. Section here, we have to make sure we accommodate the curve so make sure you push in on the on the steel A-frame as you set each rib nut. Okay, so next we just need to um, finish off this piece with a couple of pop rivets. So we've got our three sixteenths inch stainless steel pop rivets. There's there's three particular spots on this piece where where they're gonna come into play. Um, that's down low here. There's two spots here and then one spot up here on this little kind of dog leg that starts to, to go backwards. Um, so with these holes, you know, basically you can test to make sure that they're, they're the proper size for these rib nuts, or sorry, for the rivets and by just sticking it in there. And um, if you have, uh, if they go through, then, then you know you're, you're good to go. If they're too, um, if the holes are too small, uh, it's meant for something else. If they're way too big and it's sloppy, it's meant for a bigger size piece of hardware. So we're gonna go through, pop holes for those rivets, and then um, set these. Okay, and um, just one more note, it actually appears that there's there's another factory hole that we weren't seeing on a different build. So there's one rivet hole down here where there's, there's a hole behind it. Um, so you won't use that rivet hole. Don't worry about it. Set them everywhere else that you can, and that's gonna be plenty to hold the piece in place. Okay, the nice thing to do, um, best thing to do with these rivets for the rust preventative is you can actually just kind of take a little bottle of rust prevent and um, dip the end of the rivet in it like that so you get a little bit on the end of it and then just pop it right in the hole and the rust preventative goes with it. Like that.
just like the rib nuts, you want to make sure that you're putting good pressure on it, pressing the piece right up against the skin of the van. And the last step um, for TH1 is to drill and set these three rivets kind of on the inside of the front of the window bay here. Okay, so we've moved on to uh, TH2, the rear vertical piece right inside the rear door. Um, same as the, the um, TH1 piece, there's gonna be a factory hole that we're gonna need to index from. This, this piece on TH2, so basically where you say see TH2, the next rib nut hole up is the hole that we're referencing. And there's a factory hole just behind, just behind that, that we're going to end up drilling out and, and setting our first rib nut. That's going to allow this piece to kind of hang, hang in place and, and allow us to do the rest of, of what we're doing. Um, you know, just another quick uh, kind of check on your measurement is you can kind of use this horizontal line um, in reference against kind of a similar connection point at the, at the front. Um, but anyway, it's this hole against the little factory hole behind that. One thing we forgot to film on this piece, on TH2, uh, the aft piece on the driver's side, is where these um, cinch nuts, these pen nuts are, um, you do, before you set this piece uh, permanently, you do need to get behind there um, with a step bit and drill out the van body. And it's not for the pen nut itself, it's for when the bolt goes through the track and into that pen nut, it needs to have a place to go before it hits the van body. So make sure before you set all the rib nuts, you go in there, and, and drill an access hole for the end of the bolt to go through. Okay, next up we're going to um, go in sequence uh, with these rivet holes kind of on the inside of, of the dish of this window bay here. Um, and so this piece needs to basically lay flat up inside this window pocket. So we'll start at the top, work our way down, um, and uh, put this piece kind of or, or sorry, vertically up against uh, the, the back of the van here, which will index it properly for the horizontal pieces to come in after that. So a quick little note that I wanted to give you guys. This particular index hole, you can see it's not quite lined up with a, with a factory hole anymore. We're making an update to the kit. There's gonna be a rivet hole. This isn't actually cap capturing L-Track, and it, this was more meant to um, hold the A-frame nice and secure and flush against the skin of the van. So anyway, um, for, for those of you that don't have a, riv a rivet hole here, um, you can just drill a 3 16 inch hole, just like we did, parallel with this hole, and set a rivet. Uh, for future kits, there will be a pre-drilled 3 16 inch hole here for your reference. Drill through the skin of the van and set a rivet there. Okay, the bottom three on uh, number two, we're just going to continue the process. Drill, deburr, paint, rib nut. Starting from the top and then trying to clear out the debris from behind after each one. Okay, so next up are the horizontal pieces that connect um, TH1 and TH2. Um, so these are, these are pretty simple. They've got indexing points at the front and the back here. Um, and you know you've got these pieces indexed properly, um, or I should say orient, oriented properly, um, if the lettering here uh, is right side up and not backwards or upside down or anything like that. So this particular piece is, is going to go at the top, TH, TH9. It's going to go at the top in between TH1 and TH2 and it's just indexing into this notch right here. And what you're doing with these is when they go into their little slots, you're favoring it forward. So you're always gonna favor it forward into TH1, just like this, all right? And then back here, it's gonna index at this back piece. Now, if you're working by yourself, um, these little holes right here are meant for self-tapping set screws, okay? 
So if you're working by yourself, these are really handy. You can set a set screw in here, hold the piece in place while you go through and, and drill out your, um, uh, your rib nuts. All right, um, it, you know, we've got Steve here, so we've got two people working on this one. Um, and then I'll move to the back and, and show you the indexing in the back. And it doesn't quite want to slide into place perfectly, so that's no problem. You can just take a simple file and, and just kind of take a little bit of material off of the edge of this to get it to fit in there properly. Um, just make sure you hit it with the rust, uh, rust preventative stuff before you do so. So it turns out this one actually lines up with a factory hole, so don't be surprised by that. Okay, now we move down to the lower horizontal piece, uh, TH8. Um, this one's a little bit different because the index at the at the um, at the back of the piece is 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 different than the top. So. Um, the front is, is just the same as we did up top. You're just kind of favoring it forward into this indexing point here. I can feel like this one fits a little bit tighter. So, um, And then at the back, index point, um, there's a void on the, on the driver's side of the van right here. So there isn't a piece of, of uh, van body basically for this piece to lay flat. So there's, there's a bracer here and then an adjustable um, kind of bracket to connect it to, uh, to the rear of the van here. So you still use this index point. You can, I don't know if you can tell, um, I actually had to file off some of the powder coating to get this to fit nice into this index point. And then this adjustable bracket, once it's favored forward into that in indexing point, Steve says it's good, um, then you're going to move this bracket backwards until it lays flush with, um, with the back part of the van here. All right, and then you can see there's a couple rivet holes here. So that's how we're gonna set that. So once you have that flush up against there, you can actually take your 10 millimeter and tighten this. Lock this bracket into place where you need it to be so you can set your um, rivets. Okay, and again, if you're working by yourself, um, this is your rear set screw point here. All right, so it's moved a little bit forward, but that's because there's nothing for it to go into back here. So this will kind of um, give you a second connection point while you're setting everything up to get the height of this piece right. Make sure it stays in that index point while you're adjusting this bracket. So if you're using this hole, just remember it's, a, it's for a set screw, not a rivet. You're gonna end up taking the set screw back out once you kind of uh, go back through with your rib nuts and, and, and L-track later on. Okay, we also do have a set screw point in the forward end. If you're working by yourself, you can feel free to hit that one. Just remember to take it out uh, after you're done securing the rib nuts. And here we go. So um, Steve set the first two rib nuts up front on this piece. Um, he kind of went on either side of his clamp. You can set one up there, you can do two if you want. Um, you know, whatever kind of works with your workflow and if you're working by yourself or not. Um, the, the main point is that you don't want to let it drift back and out of that index point and you obviously don't want to set a couple rib, uh, rib nuts and, and basically lock the pitch of this piece into, into place if this is not um, sitting in this index point there. So the next step is we're gonna go ahead and uh, drill for these rivets and lock this adjustable bracket in here. So we'll, we'll then lock the back of this piece in, come the rest of the way through with, uh, with our rib nuts after that and finish this piece off.
Moving over to the passenger side of the van, um, it's basically the same procedure as the driver's side um, from the back of the sliding door, you know, aft. Um, so the, the pieces are basically mirror images of each other. So starting with TH3, um, you know, it's the same principle. You're going to start with this indexing hole here, and we're going to line it up over this OEM hole. Again, it's basically just a mirror image of the other side. So you can see that one lines up over there. The piece is kind of fitting into the, to the window pocket like on the other side. Moving down, we've got the same little tab here with an index hole behind that. And, and we just move forward from there, drilling out those rib nut holes, uh, setting the top one first, then setting this one, and, and just repeating that procedure uh, for TH3. And again, here's the detail of this indexing point right underneath where it says TH3. Pull it away, you can see which hole it's lining up with. The lower one of those two right there. And this indexing point right here, little tab with the hole, take it away, you can see kind of where it's lining up to. Back in place, lines up over there, so it's kind of hugging this uh, this little bracket here. Okay, and on the passenger side, it's it's the same exact procedure as you would do on the driver's side. Um, the, the pieces are mirror images and you work from forward back just like normal. Um, the only real difference is that this lower horizontal is another piece of flat steel. There's not the adjuster bracket at the very back. Um, so you're just using it just like you did with the upper uh, horizontal piece and it's just laying flat all the way to where it indexes with the rear vertical. Uh, one kind of pro tip that we wanted to insert here. Um, sometimes rib nuts may not, um, they may not seat properly and, and if you go try once or twice and the rib nut doesn't seem to be grabbing the actual van body and pulling the A-frame in tight, um, this, this tip can kind of help. That, that's what happened to us right here. Uh, the rib nut didn't seat, it seated in the orange piece itself. We drilled it out, tried a new one and it didn't want to do that again. It probably had actually opened up the hole in the back where it needed to kind of attach to the van body. So we know it's seated in this orange piece properly to accept the L track. And what we did was we, you know, kind of found a good place where we could sort of tell what was going on behind the scenes. And we drilled a little 3 16 hole uh, and, and put a pop rivet in there uh, just to keep the piece, uh, the, the A-frame piece secure to the van and, and get it nice and tight together like it should be. Um, when you do that, just make sure you're putting it off to, off to the side a little bit because remember the L-Track is going to be bolting vertically along here. So you just want, want it to clear the L-Track so it doesn't kind of push the L-Track off from the surface. Okay, so uh, we've got both sides um, aft of the slider door. We've got an A-frame in on the walls. Now we're going to move back to the driver's side. Um, and we're going to take care of everything forward of um, TH1. So uh, if you recall, I said TH1 is kind of the tree trunk, and we were kind of favoring all of these index points in toward TH1. Um, and we're going to do the same, only now we're kind of favoring them backwards into TH1 here. Um, but there's another thing that we need to take care of to make sure that everything stays square. All right, and so um, the first place that you want to start with is an index hole for uh, piece number TH5. Um, which is this piece right here and this piece is going to live just behind the B pillar just behind the driver's um, uh, seat belt there and what, we're, what we need to do here is determine the height of this piece so that we can set the height of these two horizontals okay so we're kind of looking you know the first spot we're looking at is this forward kind of rectangular cutout and then the indexing hole is going to be the circular hole here um, the one on top not this one here but this one there so it goes square, down to a circle, that's the one that we're indexing off of. So I'm going to put a little piece of tape by it so we remember that right there. So it's kind of next to this guy. And the piece on the A-frame that we're using is this oblong, um, elongated, slotted index hole here. And the reason that it's slotted is because we're not, we also need to be able to move this piece back and forth to set that distance properly as well. Okay. So we've located our first index hole, put the tape next to it, and now we need to open it up to be able to capture the rib nut when the time comes. So, 25, 64, go through, um, we're, when we're getting ready to set that, we'll uh, take the ringer and, and clean it up and then put the, put the rust proofing in there. But this is going to set the height of this piece. So again, slotted index hole into that hole, and then we know we're good here. 
This particular part of the build is where having an extra set of hands is really handy, and at the very least, some clamps to, to help you kind of keep stuff in, 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 uh, in their spots. So we're gonna clamp right there. And I don't know if you can see that, I'm kind of halfway onto the rib nut to keep the rib nut in place um, without actually clamping onto the back side of the rib nut. And it's kind of just one of those things you have to get hands on with and you'll understand what I'm talking about. But that's setting the height so that we can set this horizontal piece as well. Okay, so now we're ready to set TH6. That's the lower horizontal. Um, so you'll notice this one's pretty distinctive. It's got a little cutout here. And, and the indexes that play with TH1 are rounded on this side. So you kind of can't really mess it up. Um, but so that rear index is gonna go into the half moon or, or half circle shaped hole. All right, and you've got a hole ready for a set screw. And then the forward index is gonna go into the square hole there. Um, and this is again where an extra set of hands comes into play um, because you'll kind of need to push, push against TH5, make sure everything kind of sits flush on the wall. And uh, there, is, there are a couple PEM nuts or cinch nuts there that we will need to cut relief holes for so it can lay flat against the skin of the van. Uh, but again, when we get to, to setting this piece in place, we're gonna be favoring um, backward here into the rear index point against uh, TH1. Okay, so now we're just gonna score behind these uh, PEM nuts here on TH5. Um, like I said, we've already set the height. So um, we're gonna make some big holes with our step bit behind here so that our track bolts and the cinch nuts have a place to, to recess into. So I'm scoring these, gonna come back through and, and drill where I score. It's just these three right here. One, two, three, kind of right where the horizontal comes in. There's plenty of space behind these ones. Okay, so we've got the height of TH6 set. Um, we were using this as our reference. We drilled out the relief holes behind these uh, cinch nuts, these PEM nuts, and we opened up our index hole um, for this first rib nut here on this elongated uh, hole. So we're gonna go ahead and put our first rib nut into TH5. So what we're gonna do is, is put it in the index point right there, which is going to make this reference hole align. All right, and then we're gonna basically slide it forward, um, slide it forward like this so that the index up here is still aligned and the reference hole down here for our first rib nut is also still aligned. And we're sliding it forward until basically there's an edge back here that butts right up against the wall of the B pillar. And then we're gonna set this rib nut. All right, <laughs> the next thing we're gonna do is uh, set this rivet here. It's gonna draw this piece in and, and really kind of lock this index point between um, a TH6 and TH5 in. All right, and then we're gonna kind of, you know, sort of complete this little area here. Okay, so the next step is we're going to uh, drill for rib nuts, um, ream them out and, and uh, prime them. And we're gonna set this whole uh, TH6 piece, starting from the tree trunk, TH1, moving this direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way through and uh, set this piece. Okay, so TH7 here, um, it's kind of the final piece before we, I guess, drive everything home. Um, so TH5 is still not connected at the top. Um, but it's it's basically living where we want it to live, meaning we can't push it any further because it's resting up against the B pillar here and it's sitting flush with these two rivet points uh, up against this plane right here of the van. So that's basically exactly where we want it to live now that we've sort of set the lower points. And then we're gonna take TH7 here and again, favor it into its rear indexing point with TH1. And then it should lay flush right here. Um, so what you don't want to happen is that if TH5 is, is turned this way and these index points are, are overlapping in any way, um, if, if you have to push TH5 this way, that's okay just as long as in doing so TH5 doesn't want to then 
push outward and then start to come off of the wall um, like this. All right, so you just wanna make sure that that index isn't so tight that it's not pushing off the wall like this. If, if that's the case, then you might just wanna double check some stuff and, and readdress those measurements um, or those index points. Uh, but after that, um, you know, you can set, set your set screws, lock this piece into place, go through and set your rib nuts. And then we've got rivets here for the top of TH5 and then just a couple more rib, rib nuts down low and then we're done. All right, last step here, TH5. Um, there are some rivets that we need to connect to the B pillar back here. Um, you can see this is kind of floating. So basically we're gonna start at the top, um, push this back until you, you don't need to reef on it or anything like that, but until it's basically just seated back in that corner there and then go through uh, starting top to bottom, drill out and set, um, set our rivets there. And then we're done with this piece. Okay, so we're getting to the final stages of the, uh, the A-frame system for the walls. Um, the last step is the, uh, to install what we call the wire chases. And so they go up in the top corner where the wall meets the ceiling and they serve two purposes. The first is to give a little channel for the wiring, both the factory wiring and our wiring system to run through. And then they also just uh, make sure that the wall and ceiling panels come together properly in this corner. So it's a pretty simple install, but it's one of the only, only spots um, with the A-frame that you actually need a, um, a tape measure to get the proper placement. So we'll grab those pieces and get into it. Okay, um, so we're gonna take our first piece, TH12 here. This is the forward driver's side wire chase. All right, and the first thing we're gonna do is tuck it up into this notched index here. So it's basically just kind of resting on that shelf. All right, so we're gonna hold it up in place. All right, and then what we wanna do is, um, if you're working by yourself, uh, clamps, you know, carpenter's clamps work really well for this, um, but you wanna take a measurement here from the bottom edge of the TH12 to the top edge of TH7, which is nine and three quarters. And we're basically, we're just matching that measurement up front here and marking the wall. We're using a little, a little punch, all right? And it's just because the punch gives us a nice, clean, sort of fine line to lay that up against. Um, and then we'll come back through and just make sure that we put a little of that sealer on there for the, for the paint. But um, then we know we're nice and parallel to this piece and this piece goes exactly where, where we need it to go. We're gonna come back through and just punch some holes for 3 16 inch rivets and then we're done with this piece. This piece right here, this little unit, um, is going to be for a through bolt, basically a button head bolt uh, for this wall panel here. It just kind of captures this top corner. Um, and it's gonna be a shorter bolt, just so you guys know, uh, there's, a, there's enough space behind that for, for relief for the end of that bolt. So just a couple points now that this piece is up, um, if, especially if you're working by yourself and you're using clamps here, just be really careful that um, if your clamp is holding your piece up in place and you're drilling, keep an eye on your index point here that you marked to make sure you're not drifting up and down. Or even when you start at the back with this with this index point, um, you know the, the clamp can slip a little bit um, and, and while you're using your drill bit, you can shift the piece up and down. So just, just be careful of that. Okay, we've got TH13 in place. And just like the one before, we're gonna start closest to the tree trunk, set the rivet, and then move aft, remeasure, get the height correct, and then uh, rivet and rib nut this assembly into place. Okay, so after we, after we set that first rivet up front there, we're gonna just sort of recheck our height here using our, the line that we scribed. And we're at nine and three quarters here. There's a second rivet hole, kind of midway down. It's a contact, it'll hold the piece in place. All right, so now we're about to set our kind of two points of contact on this piece that'll hold it, hold it at the right height and hold it in place while we go back through and, and set the rest of these rib nuts here. Okay, so we've got TH13 um, kind of mocked up in place here um, and we're trying to get it up tucked where it needs to be. We, we made a mark similar to what we did in the front, 
Um, I don't know if you can see it's a Sharpie mark for right now, but we just made that mark to sort of have a goal basically for where we're trying to get this into. Um, but you probably will find that the, the factory wire harness is so thick that it kind of is, is getting in the way. So if you need to undo some of your zip ties or whatever and get it get the harness away from this corner and out of the way completely, for now, you can, you can do that to get this piece into place. And what you're looking to do is obviously meet your mark here and make sure that the harness isn't twisting the, the wire chase away from the wall because it's gonna need to, you know, it's gonna need to sit flush up against the wall when we, when we set those rib nuts. Um, so that's, that's okay if you need to get the harness out of the way for now. We can readdress it by tucking it back in after this piece is set. Okay, so we've got our two rib nuts holding this piece in place. There's a few more things to do. There's some, um, there's some rib, nuts hole, rib nut holes that we need to go through uh, and set those rib nuts to hold this piece. Um, where each one of these rib nut holes lie, um, it's on a piece of the, of the frame that the steel is a little bit more pliable. So we've actually come across times when, when you know, this little flange is kind of bent backwards a little bit um, and it might not be meeting up with the wire chase piece perfectly flush. Um, a good way to solve that, if you can't just kind of grab it and kind of bend it back into place is uh, you can take a big C-clamp um, and put the C-clamp in here and twist it down and basically sandwich those two pieces back together um, and it'll just give a nice piece of, uh, piece of metal to drill into and set the rib nut. Okay, so um, Steve's gonna drill. I put a clamp here just to sort of help hold the piece while we're drilling. You know, it does it does want to slide down sometimes, so I'm just trying to keep it in line with that scribe that we made so we put that, that first rib nut hole in the right place. Okay, passenger side wire chase is the same exact procedure as the uh, driver side TH13. So uh, it's just mirrored. So starting at the front, indexing the back, and then off you go. Okay, so the A-frame is all finished up. Um, so we're gonna clean up a little bit. Next step is we're going to uh, run all the wiring for the van. All right, just the thing to keep in mind here is when you're drilling, you can see this inserts into there. So there's a double layer of metal until right about here-ish. So, you know, just kind of reach behind here and see where you can feel it. You can feel if it's a single layer and, and go in that area so you're not drilling, you know, more than you need to. This is pretty much the only place where you don't want to put the sealer in the hole that you just drilled. We're, we're going to go back through after the fact to kind of cover up the whole area, but we need a good metal to metal connection. So we're just going to uh, insert and set the rib nut before we do the sealer. And then we're going to end up drilling out some of these factory holes and replacing them with, uh, with rib nuts um, to capture the panel that replaces this panel as part of the kit. Okay, so um, for setting the rib nuts in the slider door, it's basically we're going around the perimeter of the slider door to uh, the slider door panel um, to any one of the holes that's that's basically almost as big as our 2564 bit for the rib nut. So kind of up over this side and then down, except for the very bottom um, where there's some plastic inserts. Uh, you can reuse the hardware um, that came with your van for that panel if you have it. Um, or we've got some um, just black kind of machine head screws, uh, self-tapping screws that can uh, go in the bottom there as well. So drill out for all the rib nuts um, in those holes, uh, use your primer, your sealant, uh, set a rib nut, and then uh, it'll be ready for the panel. Then you can go in and do your hush mat and insulation.